I, female 19, I'm a sister to three brothers, male 21, male 17, and male 11. My parents have made it very obvious that they wanted only sons, and I was the odd one out. My mom's entire personality is based on her being a boy mom, so much so that when people remind her that she does, in fact, have a daughter, she just laughs and dismisses them by saying that Sienna, me, came out wrong. I don't even know what that means, but it really hurts. Moreover, my parents have a really traditional and misogynistic mindset. They find it a waste of resources to spend on my education, or save for it, because I will end up being someone else's wife and look after the house anyway. So while they have sent my older brother to college and are saving up for my younger brothers, I am not given the same treatment. This hurts more because I am the brightest out of all four. However, I realized early on that I could not expect even a farthing from my parents, and I knew I had to figure things out on my own. I have been very fortunate to have my friend Bella and her parents who have acted like mentors to me. I spend most of my time at Bella's place, and my parents don't bother me because they don't care about what I'm doing once I've done my share of chores around the house. Around a year ago, I started a small cloud kitchen from home. I bought all the materials with the money that I got for my 18th birthday, and I used to bake cupcakes and pastries, etc. It started small, but my friends from school and my younger brothers promoted it on social media, so it gradually became profitable. It didn't require a lot of time, and I was paying for everything on my own, so my parents didn't care. I had started this out as a hobby, and to have some disposable income on the side, but I never anticipated that I would become popular enough for me to save a lot of money. Because my little business became popular, and there was a huge demand for my products, I was unable to manage it with a single oven and microwave. I asked my parents if I could get another one installed with my own money. I never asked them to pay for anything. They looked a little annoyed and asked me why I wanted another oven. So I finally told them about my cloud kitchen and how I've been running a mini business remotely. They looked at me for a long while and burst out laughing. I have never felt so demotivated in my entire life. They told me that this business of mine was useless and that I should focus on getting in shape. I'm on the chubbier side, to land a husband. I could not believe my ears. I didn't expect any financial support from them, but I could not hold back my tears when they started to crush my spirit. I was too heartbroken to say anything because I knew that they would not let me get another oven and would now begin to be generally disruptive so I'm unable to work properly. I called up Bella's mom crying. Bella had gone off to college, but I was still in touch with her parents. They made it a point to call me and check up on me. I confided in her mom, and she asked me if I would like to operate my business from her kitchen. She said she had no problem if I wanted to install another oven, and I could have the house to myself when she and her husband went to work every day. It sounded like such a lucrative offer, but I knew I didn't have the money to pay for electricity or rent. She told me not to think about that, and just bake them a cake every month and I was most welcome to use her place. I thanked her profusely and went over the next day to see the setup and get my hands set on her kitchen. This was six months ago. Since I've been working at her place, my sales have doubled. I make enough to save for college if I do intend to go, and I also began earning enough money to afford a place of my own. Four months ago, I moved out. I took a small studio apartment near Bella's mom's place, and the arrangement is working out perfectly. I'm also paying some amount to her mom because I feel guilty about exploiting her generosity. My parents were quite alarmed when I informed them of my decision to move out, but I was pretty set on what I wanted, so there wasn't much drama. They don't send me any money or any help, and we are in low contact. I go over once in a while to meet my brothers, but that's about it. My business is mostly done via Instagram. A few days ago, a newspaper was doing an article on influencers and online businesses in the city, and they took my interview as well. I thought nothing of it, but I was featured in the paper along with some of the other people from my city. My parents apparently saw the article and called me home. They said they wanted to talk about something very important. I went home, and I saw that my mother had prepared a feast of my favorite dishes. Honestly, I didn't know what to make of it, because none of this seemed normal. I asked her what was up, and she said that they were in a tight spot and needed my help. She said that dad had lost his job and they were finding it difficult to manage since my mother didn't work, traditional gender roles. She told me that since I had a successful business, I owed it to them to help them out in my tough times. I couldn't believe her audacity. They had not helped me ever. On the contrary, they were the ones who had demotivated me to the extent 
that I had to run away from home, and now they wanted my help? I told her that even if I did choose to help them, I could not because I was saving up for college since they had not. I told them that they had made it clear that my higher education was going to be my responsibility alone and that they did not hold my brothers to the same standard. And now that I was taking responsibility for myself, they could not expect me to take responsibility for them either. My father was listening to me say all this and he just said that he couldn't believe I was being so selfish and they had always known that I would be the worst child of the lot. I got up and thanked my mother for the meal. Since then, my dad has not spoken to me, but my mom is consistently pushing me to help out because I should not make my brothers suffer because of my differences with them. I don't want to help them out. I love my brothers, but they are not my responsibility. I don't want to be responsible for them. It's tough for me to take care of myself anyway, and I do not, under any circumstance, want to assume responsibility for other people. But somewhere deep down, I also feel guilty for not helping them when I can afford to. Am I the a-hole for refusing to help my parents in their difficult times? Mom somehow found out where I lived and came over with my youngest brother. She started weeping, saying that she could not believe she had raised such a heartless daughter who was willing to let her brothers go to sleep hungry. Then she looked at my brother and told him that I was the reason he was getting only soup for dinner for the last three days. I wanted to slap my mother that very minute. I told my mother to leave my house and never show me her face again, or I will call the cops. I can't believe that she would do something like this to turn my brothers away from me. This wouldn't work on Rob, male 17, because he sees my parents for what they are, but Jay, male 11, is young and gullible, and she will poison him against me. I don't know what to do, but I don't want to lose my brother. I read all your comments very carefully. I also had a long talk with Belle and her mother. I have decided that I am going to go no contact with my family for the foreseeable future. As far as Jay is concerned, I will try to explain my side to him when he grows older. I cannot handle the toxicity of my parents any longer. I spoke to my elder brother Joseph, and he and I have decided to set aside some money for Rob that we will give to him in secret. I know for sure that if my parents find out that Rob has been getting money, they will try to take it from him. I'm so glad to be rid of my horrible parents. Rob has moved in with Joseph. Apparently, there was a huge blow up in the house regarding mom and dad's parenting methods. They found out I had been sending money to Rob, and they asked him to plead with me on their behalf. He refused to do it because he knows and is respectful of my boundaries, but they told him that they would not be giving him his college fund if he didn't manage to get money from me. That really pissed him off, and he moved out. He says he's sick of the selfishness of our parents and that he'll figure shit out on his own. The entire family, aunts and uncles and grandparents are now involved and mom and dad are getting a lot of shit from them. They were banking on relatives for help but after this fiasco, everyone refused to help them. It serves them right in my opinion. Not the a-hole, that's your money. You earned it without their help. You earned it despite their shitty attitude and treatment towards you. You don't owe them a thing. Jay will understand when he grows up. Ask them all to F up. Not the a-hole. Well, 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 if it isn't karma coming to bite your parents in the ass, it's good that nobody from the family is helping them out and that their horrible behavior is now out in the open for everyone to see. You did nothing wrong. Don't beat yourself up over it. Not the a-hole. You are a brave young woman and I have a lot of respect for you. You did the right thing, don't second guess yourself. You're a little entrepreneur and you will be very successful one day. Kudos to your brother for standing up for you. I grew up in a very busy house. I was the third of seven children. My mother always struggled with mental health issues and my dad worked long hours. Because of the role they put on my shoulders, I wasn't close to my siblings and even now I have no urge to connect with them. Ignoring all that. This is mostly about birthdays. I celebrated my birthday until I was 7 with my grandparents, but on my 7th birthday we went swimming. I couldn't swim, and I had a traumatic experience. After that my mother refused to celebrate claiming it was traumatic for her. All my other siblings got to celebrate but over time I've gotten used to it. And I'm being 100% genuine about that. I have no urge to celebrate my birthday. It's another day to me. A few years ago, I went low contact with my siblings and dad and had no contact with my mother because she wasn't supportive of my pregnancy. I was 17 
which is a year older than she was when she had my eldest sibling. In-laws decided to throw a birthday party for me. I told them I didn't want to. They know I'm low contact slash no contact, but I haven't explained why. I socked it up. They told me it would be good for my daughter, and it's my 21st. Well, my mother shows up, causes a scene, yells at me that I'm a bully for not inviting her, and makes my daughter cry so me and my partner left. Mother-in-law apologized and said she didn't invite her. Sister-in-law did. Now, here's where I might be the a-hole. I told her I don't care who invited my mother. I was pressured into going, and I just don't care. I'm over it. I now just want to spend Christmas with my immediate family. Mother-in-law started crying and said I'm the a-hole because she just wanted to do something nice. My partner was on my side, but said it would be nice if we went because it wasn't actually her fault. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. She wanted to make a birthday party for you. That's okay, until you said no. Later, it wasn't about you. It was all about her. Tell her this year is gonna be about you. And maybe, the next holiday, you are gonna go visit them. But they have to respect your boundaries this time. ESH, to varying degrees. Sister-in-law is the biggest a-hole. Knowing somebody is no contact or low contact, and then violating that boundary as a surprise, is never okay. Plus, she didn't apologize. Remain NC with sister-in-law. She was actively trying to set you up. Mother-in-law is less so. She knew you didn't want a party, but didn't understand how much trauma you have in your background around birthdays. She didn't invite your mom and agreed that wasn't appropriate. She has apologized, but I don't like how she swung it back on you the moment you said you still weren't okay. As for you, I understand why you feel violated by in-laws, but a gesture of understanding and good faith towards mother-in-law might be appropriate since this doesn't seem like it was her fault. Maybe you don't attend Christmas, but still reach out to her with some kind of words? Because right now, it seems like you're blaming her for something sister-in-law did, which is a slight bit a hole -ish. But make no mistake, you are the broader victim here. Mom is obviously a massive a-hole, to the point where this doesn't even need acknowledging. Not the a-hole. This is your mother-in-law's fault, because she made your birthday about her. She didn't do what you wanted to. She did what she wanted you to have and sister-in-law jumped on the bandwagon with her mother and decided you needed your mother at your party. Neither of them gave a crap about what you wanted. They felt you needed to have what they wanted. This wasn't for you. It was for them. You and your husband and your daughter are your own little family unit. You need to do what is good for your family unit. Mother-in-law and everyone else is extended family. Your needs come before everyone else's desires. I would suggest the following. First, your husband needs to set both mother-in-law and sister-in-law straight on. They overstepped and created a traumatic event for you when you didn't want it to begin with. This isn't mother-in-law and sister-in-law, and you can't tell me that mother-in-law didn't know your other was coming. BS on that. Sister-in-law might have been the one who actually invited your mother, but mother-in-law knew about it and decided to throw sister-in-law under the bus when it all blew up. Your husband needs to, your husband needs to say this to them and make it clear that they were irresponsible and selfish and they both owe you a huge apology. And it's an apology about their bad conduct, not your hurt feelings. And there are consequences for their bad behavior. The consequences are that you, hubby, and your daughter are spending Christmas at home with your own little family unit. That you and your daughter have been traumatized enough by them, and you are spending a quiet Christmas at home. Mother-in-law and sister-in-law need to reflect on their bad behavior, and them assuming that they do what is best for someone else. They don't, and they proved it with the birthday party fiasco. Actions have consequences. Hopefully, they can learn from this. This post is triggered by the recent HOA rebate. One reminding me of a constant argument that my husband, 40 male, and I, 35 female, have. He is military and gets a base pay, plus extras for various things, such as housing and cola. Though cola was recently taken away due to a decrease in cost here. In the States, the military pays the rent directly. We're overseas currently, so the pay is given to him, then he pays the housing agency. Currently, I make more money than him. I also work for the military as a contractor. However, I only worked the first year of our marriage and then didn't work for two years due to various circumstances. Frequent moving, baby, trouble finding employment after moving overseas. During those two years, he took over all my bills, car payments and insurance, student loans, etc. If I ever needed money, he would hand it to me without question. I say this because it's important to know that he's not stinging with his money and never made me feel guilty for not working due to circumstances beyond my control. 
Right now, we split the bills. He pays some, I pay others. We don't have any joint accounts because we don't have the same spending habits and we're both of the opinion that as long as the bills are covered, we don't care what each other does with our money. Within reason, we're both fairly responsible. However, it's a constant conversation that he pays more in bills because I refuse to contribute to rent. I don't contribute because the military covers the cost. As I saw in the comments of the other post, as far as I'm concerned, that bill doesn't exist because it's covered by the military. If we lived on base or in the States, he wouldn't ever see that money because they would pay it directly. But because we live off base overseas, they provide the money to him and he goes and pays it. Because the money comes to him, he sees it as a part of his paycheck. I disagree and Chikli said that we'll just live on base next time. Neither of us wants to do this because then the bill nor the money coming to him would exist and it would solve this problem. So am I the a for not wanting to pay half the rent that the military covers but he sees as part of his paycheck? I was recommended to add this as an edit to the post. I pay all the childcare for our two children, $12,000 a month, and all the groceries for all four of us, $500 each month, without his contribution. Now the a -hole. The military pays the rent. This is a ridiculous argument on his part. Does he expect you to pay half the rent that the military already pays to him? I'm guessing this whole discussion is more about the fact that you make more money than he does right now, so he feels like you should pay more of the bills. If that's the case, he should have that discussion instead of this pointless argument about you paying half the rent that the military gives him the money for. I'm surprised I'm the only one with this opinion, but you're the a-hole OP. Huge part of the reason most people join the military is for all the financial benefits. It's literally part of the compensation. Rent being covered, college tuition, health insurance, and probably a grocery list of other things. I don't even want to know what is covered by taxpayer dollars. These are in fact an added compensation value for his time serving in the military. Say you are offered two jobs with an equal incentive, same pay, perks, work environment, all equal, but one of them offers free daycare, healthcare, lunch, or cover some other important recurrent expense. Anyone would choose the job with the added benefits. The fact that he paid your college loans and supported you for years while unemployed certainly shows he's certainly not cheap. Are you going to pay him back for that to even out the inequity of splitting? More than just the bills then? In wanting you to contribute to rent, he understands his worth and that it is his service what is awarding the both of you free rent. He works for that, not you. Not the a-hole. It's not part of your husband's pay. It is housing allowance. If your rent was more than the allowance, you would split the difference. But he shouldn't be treating it like part of his salary. It is a part of the benefits package which is completely different. Health insurance is also paid for, but that isn't included as cash in a paycheck either. That money is housing allowance and shouldn't be used for anything else. Your husband is totally wrong. So what's your opinion on today's stories? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Also leave a like and subscribe as it does the channel a huge favor and we will see you in the next one.